Come on, John. He is risen. risen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could also say this morning, He is ascended, in which you could say, He is ascended indeed. Hallelujah. (laughs) Today we do find ourselves on the seventh Sunday of Easter, so we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And as you may know, this last Thursday was Ascension Day. And so today we do gather in that way to celebrate our resurrected Lord, our ascended Lord, who rules and reigns on high for our good. And so we do worship our risen and ascended Lord Jesus on this day. As we think about that, uh, we receive the blessings of our Lord once again today. Uh, Those blessings come to us through his word and sacrament today, receiving the body and blood of Jesus. And so we thank the Lord for those blessings that he gives to us on this new day. Uh, We do find ourselves on Memorial Day weekend, and we also thank the Lord for those who have served us in the past, uh, giving thanks to God for them and their sacrifice and service. And so that's a part of this weekend as well as we uh, gather on this day. So our service for today is setting four on this fifth Sunday. We use setting four out of our hymnals. That begins on page 203. So with that, let us join our voices together this morning as we sing our opening hymn, which is hymn number 492. On Christ's ascension, I now build. May the Lord bless us this morning. ascension I now build the hope of my ascension this hope alone has always stilled all doubt and apprehension for where the head is there as well I know his members are to dwell When Christ will come and call them. Since Christ returned to claim his throne, Great gifts for me obtaining, My heart will rest in him alone, No other rest remaining. For where my treasure went before, there all my thoughts will ever soar to still their deepest yearning. O grant, dear Lord, this grace to me, recalling your ascension that I may serve you faithfully in thanks for my redemption. And then when all my days will cease, let me depart in joy and peace in answer to my pleading. Please stand. As we gather this day, we do gather in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word. Call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ 
in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaim that Jesus birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, the Father's Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever we worshiped and adored. Holy Spirit. Alone, our Lord Most High, in God the Father's glory, Amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father, for you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for this morning's readings. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 26. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip's, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these, with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer, together with women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, 
and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the field was called in their own language, Ekeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it and let another take his office. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Eustace, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, you, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two have chosen you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 6 and 12 through 20. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and from the, of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruits, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of these nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light or lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true, and the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me, to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the ones who hear say, come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing the Alleluia in verse. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, and that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. 
the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I and them, and you and me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory, that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service continues as we confess our faith found in the wording in the Nicene Creed. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and became and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism, remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. At this time, the children are invited forward for the children's message. We got a couple. Yeah, come on up. No one wants to come up by themselves, right? How are you guys doing today? Thanks for coming up. That way we can have a children's message today. You remember last week? Remember last week's message? Last week we talked about prayer. Remember on our bulletin cover there were folding hands, folded hands, and we talked about prayer. Talked about that prayer is talking to God. Uh, we talked about that God can answer prayers because he's God, right? He can do all things. He's all powerful. We also talked about that God wants to answer our prayers because he loves us. Um, what else did we talk about? Last time we also talked about that God always gives us what we need, right? But does he always give us what we want? Very good, yeah. So we talked about those things last time. So prayer, uh, a very wonderful gift God gives us. He listens to our prayers. He answers our prayers because he's God. He loves us. Well, there's someone praying in our gospel reading. I just read it a little while ago. Someone was praying in our gospel reading today. Do you know who it is? I'll give you a hint. Look at the bulletin cover. You know who that is? Jesus. Yeah. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus is praying. Wow. Jesus is praying. Do you know who he's praying for? Everybody who's here. He's praying for those who believe in him. Do you guys believe in Jesus? Yeah, I hope so. And I hope we all believe in Jesus, right? But the neat thing today is Jesus is praying in our gospel reading today, and he's praying for us. In today's reading, he prays for those, us, who would come to faith through other Christians, through the hearing of God's word. Jesus is praying for us today. It's kind of a cool thing if you think about it. Jesus prays for us. So then let's think about what is Jesus praying for today? So he's praying for us, which is a good thing, but he's praying for our unity. He's praying for us to be one. So let's think about that. What does it mean to be one with someone else? What, it mean, what does it mean to be unified with someone else? 
Let's think of it this way. What does it mean to be one on a team? If you play a team sport, what does it mean to be one? What do you think? Go ahead. One of them, one with them, right? So you're on the same team, maybe wear the same jerseys. What else? What does it mean to be one? To be unified. So do you help each other when you're on a team? Do you play with them? Or do you play against your teammates? <laughs> no, you, we play together, right? So like if you're in baseball, you're in defense, you play together, right? Against your opponent, or whatever sport it might be. But we try to run the same plays, we try to do the right things as we do things together, right? Again, Jesus has made us his people. He has made us one through our faith in him, through his spirit who lives in us. We are one. And so that means then, as we look at everyone here today, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Let me say it this way, we're all one family. Pretty neat thing. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We are unified in him, and so we live out our faith together. What does that look like? Well, we love one another. We help one another. We forgive one another. We do things together. Sometimes that's not easy, though, right? Maybe think about it at home. Maybe you have a brother or sister that's kind of hard to get along with. Or they might say that you're hard to get along with. <laughs> um, but we are family. Family at home, family at church, and family in Jesus. Jesus makes us one. And so let's think about last thought then. Jesus makes us one with him by taking away our sins. Yeah. It's sin that divides us, separates us from one another, but Jesus takes away our sin, makes us one with him. And as we all live in Jesus, he takes away all of our sins and makes us all one in him. That's what Jesus is praying for today. Yeah. Do you think that's maybe a good thing that we should pray for? I think so too. All right. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us be united with one another, even when it's really hard. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up this morning. Our service continues with our sermon hymn number 525, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen and ascended Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's been said that we live in a society that is geared on instant gratification. It's been said because it is true. We seek fast food we desire fast internet and fast phone speeds. We want answers to our present day needs. If we don't get answers today, well, then we want answers yesterday. This is all to say that as we go through life, we long for things. We yearn for things. We want our problems taken care of. We want our tensions resolved. And so we seek to quickly alleviate our growling stomach, our illnesses and our pains, or any kind of discomfort that we experience along the way. So have you found yourself longing for things to be better as of late? As we know, this past week we experienced yet another tragic school shooting in our country. A horror that has left the precious lives of 19 children and two adults unaccounted for. It has left others to recover physically from their injuries. It has left numerous others to pick up the pieces emotionally. This, of course, being on the heels of uh, another deadly shooting that happened recently in Buffalo, too. The list of shootings seems to go on and on, with the list getting longer and longer. But while such shootings are a tragedy, there is an even larger scale version of lives being lost, too. Not to downplay the loss of life through recent shootings, but to elevate and maybe even cry out louder the lives that are lost through abortion. But when it comes to children's lives being lost in this country, the U.S. averages thousands of abortions per day. Another larger scale version of lives being lost is seen in the videos and the pictures of the war that continues between Russia and Ukraine. And we see them, right? the graphic pictures and the graphic videos that are maybe even too graphic to, to watch. It may be almost equally difficult to watch or look at is the face of those who are still alive, but yet have lost so much. Yet the brokenness of life does not just come to us through the news feeds on our screens, no, the brokenness of life visits us on a personal level, too. A stillborn child. A young child who develops incurable cancer. A loved one who takes their life for whatever reason. And if all this were not bad enough, we have the brokenness and the weakness of our sinful flesh to grapple with, too. That hits home the things that we don't want to do, the things that we resolve that we are not going to do again, 
we do again. And so we give in to anger and bitterness again. We give in to slander and gossip again. We give in to righteous self-righteousness and judgmental thoughts, which basically look down on others again. In summary, we live as if we matter most. Again. It's with all these things we want resolved. We want a solution. And we want it quickly. So the question today is, what is the solution? The problems around us are very easy to see. The problems around us are very easy to list out. But the question is, what is the solution? With recent shootings, the whole issue of gun control laws has reignited again. Not to say that they shouldn't be, and not to say that maybe some changes should be made. But the question is, are gun laws the real solution? Are gun laws where we find our real hope? The same can be said when it comes to medical research and medicines too. Of course, we have been abundantly blessed by medical research and medicines along the way. There have been incredible advancements when it comes to this field. They have extended life. They have elevated the quality of life. All this without question. But the question is, are medical research and medicines the real solution to our problem? Are they the place where we find our real hope? So what is the solution to our problems? The world around us would say the solution is gun laws, medical research, science, education in general, and maybe other things too. But the only way that we can arrive at the solution to our problem is to know the real source of our problem. For without knowing the real source to our problem, we are left merely to treat the symptoms. But think of it this way. If someone has a serious bacterial blood infection, giving that person Tylenol for their high fever is not the solution. It may help with the symptoms, but it's not going to solve the problem. Instead, such a person with a bacterial blood infection needs blood work done. A blood culture is needed to determine the bacterial strain so that the right antibiotic may be given. In this way, knowing the cause of the problem determines the solution. So how do we know the cause of our problem? Today's epistle reading from the book of Revelation points to it. Today's reading from the book of Revelation shows the restoration, the renewal of all things when Jesus comes on the last day. It shows how everything will be restored, kind of like going back to the Garden of Eden that's perfectly renewed and restored creation. And as God's word shows us this picture today, it points to the previous problem. The previous problem being sin. Verse 3 today says of the new creation, no longer will there be anything accursed. How does this all fit together? When Adam and Eve fell into sin back in Genesis 3, the Lord states the consequences of sin. There in Genesis 3, verses 17 through 19, the Lord says, cursed is the ground because of you. In pain shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. 
In other words, because of sin, we now live under the curse of sin. And because of the curse of sin, our lives are filled with pain and turmoil and death. It's with this thought in mind that the Apostle Paul says in Romans 8, For creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly the adoption of sons, the redemption of our bodies. And so this all then takes us to the solution in Jesus. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. In other words, because of our sins, we are under sin's curse. The curse being God's law that says in Galatians 3.10, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. This is our problem. But the solution to our problem is Jesus. Again, Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, by becoming a curse for us. It's written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. This is to say this morning that you and I need blood work too. Not blood work done on our own blood, but blood work that is done through the blood of Christ. Verse 14 of today's text says, Blessed are those who wash their robes. This takes us back to Revelation 7.14 that says, They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So the blood work of Jesus, how he suffers and dies and rises again, is the solution to our problem. In today's text, we see the result of Jesus. We see the result of Jesus being the solution to our problem because Jesus takes our sin away. Again, today's text says, no longer will there be anything accursed. And so today's text shows us when Jesus comes again, once again, the river of the water of life will flow for God's people. When Jesus comes again, once again, the tree of life will have access to it. When Jesus comes again, paradise and Eden will be open for God's people. Not about you, but I can't wait. So Jesus is the one we long for. He's the one we should long for, and in reality, he is the one we long for. We long for him with great expectation. We long for him and we yearn for him. We cannot wait. For we want him to return today. And if not today, even yesterday. Our Christian faith has a say with the words of Job. I know that my Redeemer lives. And that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Yes, our hearts yearn. So we say with the words of today's text, Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yet the Lord's timing is not our timing, right? Second Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. 
And so in faith, we are left to wait on our Lord, which is hard, right? Especially hard as we wait for things to be different. Especially hard as we wait for things to be better. And maybe at times really hard when we wonder how much worse things can get. And so we cry out, Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But the good news for us today is this. He does. That is to say, He does come. Even as we wait for Jesus to come on the last day, He comes to us today, right now, in the here and now. Jesus says to us in John 14, 18, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Jesus comes to us in the here and now as he sends us his Holy Spirit. Next week we will celebrate Pentecost Sunday, that is the outpouring, the giving of the Holy Spirit. And so right now in the here and now, the Holy Spirit comes to us through his word. The Holy Spirit fills us through the waters of our baptism. Jesus comes to us also in the here and now through communion. Here as we gather in for communion, through the basic things of bread and wine, the Lord Jesus comes to us. Here he gives us his body, he gives us his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, for our life and salvation, for our strength to carry on. And Jesus also comes to us in the here and now in one other way we might think about this morning. That is to say, Jesus comes to us in the here and now through one another. Through our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so through the hands and the feet of our brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus works. He comes to us. Through them we are upheld. Through them we are encouraged. Through them we are embraced. And at times through them we are carried. And so this means then that we should long for all these ways that Jesus comes to us today. All these ways as we wait for him to return. We should yearn for him in these ways. We should look for him in these ways. And we should say amen Come, Lord Jesus. For in all these ways, Jesus does come to us today in the here and now as we wait for his return. And so with all this in mind this morning, God's word points out the fact that yearning for things, longing for things, and even maybe wanting instant gratification is not necessarily a bad thing. But the important thing is that we know what the problem is. And in knowing the problem, it's important to know what the solution is. The problem is sin and the curse that it brings. But the solution is Jesus and the blessings that he brings. So let's continue to yearn for him. Let's continue to long for him. Let's continue to seek gratification in him. Be it at his second coming, be it in the here and the now. For his word says to us today, surely I am coming soon. Because of that, we can't wait to be gratified in him. And so we say, amen, come Lord Jesus. In his name. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our service this morning continues with the prayer of the church. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, all of creation groans under the effects of sin and longs for a better day to come. In the midst of so many ongoing examples of brokenness, help us all to see the real problem of sin and in so doing turn the hearts of all to see the real solution in Jesus. 
change hearts, minds, and lives by the presence of your Spirit among us so that we repent of sin, turn to you, and live in your ways. Guide those in charge of public safety to make and administer good and right laws and in so doing fulfill their responsibilities. Comfort and sustain those who mourn through the sure and certain hope of a better day to come. Because Jesus has risen and ascended and will come again to renew and restore all things. Lord, in your mercy. Risen and ascended, Lord. We thank you for your words to us today that say, Surely I am coming soon. As we long for and anticipate your return, give us unwavering hope through the promises of your word and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Continue to create in us a desire to be quickly satisfied by your word and sacraments in the fellowship of our brothers and sisters in the faith. Help us seek you now and at your return at the last day as we say, Amen, come Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, on this Memorial Day weekend, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this nation. Grant us a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security. Bring to mind the sacrifices of those who serve faithfully until death in the protection of our freedom and in the defense of our land. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, you have seated Christ at your right hand for our deliverance. Remember all who are afflicted with injury and, and illness, including Pat and Claire and Bev, Ruby, Robin and Darlene, Kenny, Roger and Ryan. Give them health and strength according to your will. Sustain them in faith, knowing that for Jesus' sake you will raise them in glory on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for our families today of Jerry Jensen, Dave Jurgensen, Paul, Amy, Levi, and Lynn Jurgensen, that they might continue to grow in their faith by turning away from sin, receiving your grace, and living according to your word. Give them what they need to glorify you in their respective vocations. Fill their lives with well-being and peace as they live in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. This time we collect our offering, once again asking that all members and guests to please sign the record of fellowship forms found near the center aisle. Sam. Our service continues on page 208. The Lord be with you. 
and lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with our angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that comes to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Our service continues on page 211 with the Song of Simeon. Please stand.
redeeming grace, a light to lead the Gentiles unto your holy hill, the glory of your people, your chosen Israel. All glory to the Father, all glory to the Son, all glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. For as in the beginning is now shall ever be, God's triune name resounding through all eternity. And let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing the closing hymn number 493. A hymn of glory, let us sing. Now what?
ascending high up to the portals of the sky. Alleluia, alleluia. Hereafter, Jesus, you shall see returning in great majesty. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Be now our joy on earth, O Lord, and be our future great reward. Alleluia, Alleluia. With you forever, we shall praise your name eternally. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Oh, risen Christ. Ascended Lord, all praise to you, let earth accord. Alleluia, Alleluia, you are while endless ages run, with Father and with Spirit one. Alleluia, Alleluia. Please be seated.